This video will look at getting records for books and journal articles into your EndNote library. So we're going to look at getting information from three different sources. First of all, the library search. Uh, this can be for books or journal articles. Then we're going to look at a specific journal database. And finally, we're going to look at how you can download the odd record from Google Scholar. We'll start by looking at the library search option. I'm here on the library homepage and I'm just going to do a basic search in the library search box that we see here. Advanced searching won't be covered in this video. I'm going to search for visual literacy which I've searched for many times before because it is the topic of my research. And that has brought me many results. I'm not going to worry about filtering anything here. That is outside the scope of this video. I'm just showing you how to get this information into EndNote. So the easiest way to do this is to put everything that you want to go into EndNote into a save folder. So I'm just going to click on the save this item option alongside everything on this page, which is 10 records. It's a mixture of books and journal articles. So now they're all in the saved folder, I can go up to that, the saved items option, top right here. And you'll see that there's an option next to the print and email buttons to export to. Click on that and choose EndNote. That will provide an RIS file. RIS files will all import directly into EndNote. You can see it's come down here on my status bar. Just going to click on that. And it takes me to EndNote and brings all of that information in automatically. So these 10 records are now in my imported references. If I click on any of them individually, I can see the information over on the right hand side. And remember, if you want to make any changes, you can just select the record you want to edit, click the edit option at the top of the panel on the right hand side, and then, for example, change the cases to what is required by the whole styles. Either say, click the save button or you can just move on to another record and it will automatically save as well. But you can see how easy that was to bring everything in. Now we'll look at how to get information from journal databases. It's quite difficult to do a video about this because individual databases have different ways that you export information to get it into EndNote. But what this video will do is show you of the more standard interfaces. So I'm going to the databases or subject option and rather than choose the A to Z, I'm going to go to the education and childhood studies databases as that has examples of each of the type I need. I'm going to start off with educational research complete as this is an EBSCO database and many other databases you use may also be EBSCO databases. If you're doing this off campus, you will need to sign on. And here is the standard EBSCO search view. Again, I'm going to search for visual literacy. I will put it in as a phrase search this time. And search for that. Again, you would do a much more sophisticated search than this for your own work and it has found several records. Just like with the library search I can put individual records into a folder just by clicking on them. I can also go to the share option and choose to put all of these first 50 results into my folder. I'm going to do that. So I can now go to the folder. So I'll go up here and click on folder. And here you can see it's got those 50 records in it. 
Over on the right hand side, I have options of what to do with these. And you can see one of those is export. It's already got the direct export in RIS format selected, which as you can see goes into EndNote. So I can just click the Save button over on the left hand side. Again, it provides me with an RIS file and I can click on that to open those in EndNote. And we can see there my imported records folder now has 50 records in it. Some of these obviously need their cases changing, especially the ones that are in all capitals. Some of them don't have authors. This is probably to do with the type of work it was. I didn't look specifically. If it seems to be a basic journal article, it might be worth going back to the database and see if you can find that information. Sometimes it's because it's an editorial and there's no author given. So that was an EBSCO database. So now we'll look at a ProQuest journal database. So again, I will just search my usual topic. To select individual records, you check the boxes down the left hand side with the ProQuest database. Or I can select all of them at once by clicking the box at the top. To export these, I will go to the site information and at the bottom of the screen, you can see there's the option to create the RIS file to send to EndNote. It gives me a few other options. I'm just going to leave it exactly as it is. Continue. It's starting the download and I've got my RIS file down in the corner again. So you can see this is very quickly bringing a lot of records into the library. They're not all perfect. Sometimes there's a little bit of editing to do on them or the odd little bit of information you have to go off and find, but it's much quicker than having to type all these in. The final one I'm going to show you is Web of Science. So I'm back to the databases. I scroll down, I'll find other useful databases and there is Web of Science Core Collection and I'll connect to that. Again, my usual option. As with ProQuest, I can select the page or I can do individual items down the left. And then there is the option to export. And here you can see there's a direct option to go to EndNote Desktop. Click Export. Notice you can do more if you wish. You can do up to 500 here. Now this time it's created a CIW file. I can click on that. I have an Enlot Online account as well, so I have to just verify it's the desktop version I want it to go to. And it's brought those in. Quite a bit of missing information here. I've got quite a few years missing, so I would need to do a little bit of work to get that correct. So I've now got 90 records in my library and there will be some duplication here because I've been getting records from three different databases and they might have had the same information in them. So when you've done some large imports, it's always worth going to the library ribbon and choosing find duplicates. It will then give you the option of which record to keep. Usually you're keeping your oldest record um, but sometimes it is worth just looking to see if one's got more information than another. This one looks pretty similar, but I'll just keep the first one. And the same with this one. I'll just keep the first one. So that has got rid of those duplicates. If you want to export records from any other databases, and there isn't an obvious option to export or save citations. And the best thing to do is just to go to Google and search for what you want. For example, exporting to EndNote from Hein Online.
you'll usually then get some instructions that someone's put up to show you how to do that. Finally, we'll look at how you can download a record from Google Scholar. We don't normally recommend using Google Scholar as a resource discovery tool, but if you've found a reference to something, perhaps in another journal article, it can sometimes be the quickest way of finding an individual paper or a book we haven't got in the library catalogue. So I found a journal article that I want to be able to put into my EndNote library. I've copied the information from another journal, so I'm just going to put that straight into Google Scholar and search for it. And here you see it has found it. It's also found a link to the PDF and we have a video showing you how to attach those to the records in your library, EndNote records. With Google Scholar, you can only export one record at a time to EndNote. You do this by clicking on the quotation marks to go to the site option. And at the bottom of the dialog box, you can see there's an option to export to EndNote. Click on that. And again, it's given me a delivery file, this time an ENW file. But again, I can just click on that. And it will import it into EndNote. If I select it, you can see it has got all of the information I need in the reference. If what you're searching for is a book, and I've got one here, then it will probably give you a link to Google Books, but you can still use the site option to send that to EndNote. It isn't quite as good as getting it from some places. As you can see, there is some information missing for example, the place published. But here, this is the MIT Press. I'll just put that into all capitals. So I know that that is going to be in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So getting things from Google Scholar is usually fine, but it's always worth checking what you get 